and here we are uh, new file we're going to create a little square on here like so so with the rectangle tool just draw a little square on your stage select it okay and hit F8 and that converts it to a symbol convert to symbol make sure that it's a type is a movie clip registration top right and symbol name top left thank you and the same symbol name we can just call it box MC and hit OK obviously you'll see that it's in the library there's your preview there it is on the stage here it is on the timeline so these things we're going to be watching what's happening in all three locations timeline stage and library if you need to see your library you can hit control L if you need to see property that's con control F3 I pair them up in one tab group so that I can see them together easily okay later we're gonna also work with motion presets and motion editor okay so while we're at it we might as well go and turn those on motion editor and motion presets right here under window okay motion editor motion presets once you open them if they're just by themselves somewhere or attached to some other windows you can separate them by dragging one over to the timeline for motion editor that's the best location for it for what we're gonna do and motion presets actually fits nicely here uh, after the library so that's your um, space and then this output I'm just gonna close so you'll have timeline motion editor properties library and motion presets if you want to go ahead and save this uh, workspace you can actually go new workspace and motion editor okay or motion twins so to save your workspace again you're gonna go in classic here or whatever that says here the button on top and you're gonna say new workspace and you name it whatever you want it so motion editor All right, and th this way you can always you can click on classic you can change your motion uh, your um, settings for your uh, layouts and then you can always go back to motion editor and you'll have exactly how you like it here for this particular task so now that we're ready we have a little movie clip here it is on the stage and on the timeline we're going to create a motion tween okay to apply motion tween if you guys remember you can right click here on the little keyframe and say create motion twin right here or you can right click here on the object itself on the symbol right and say create motion twin right here either one will give you the same result which is one second worth of animation I'm at 24 frames per second here so I'm gonna get 24 frames of animation right now if you scrub the timeline try that if you scrub it nothing's moving that's because we haven't told it where to go yet in order for us to tell it where to move to uh, we'll actually take the playhead and put it at the end of the tween and move the square from one side of the stage to another okay if you fail to do that and um, the playhead stayed at one and you move that there's no motion happening because all you simply did is move the one, only one point that you had so in order for motion to happen you need to have two points remember two keyframes so we're gonna put the playhead there again I'm showing that second time and put that on the other side now that we have two little keyframes that's when the motion is gonna happen you can hit enter to preview it in flash or you can hit command enter to export it and preview in the player file okay See right there so right now it's moving from one side to another now we already kind of learned that before but what you haven't seen is this cool little tool called 3, uh, 3d rotation tool if you click on that you will see that your item whatever item you have has crosshairs now 
it's a little hard to see on the blue uh, on the blue uh, shape here so I'm actually gonna go in and change the color of my movie clip and to change the color of your movie clip you'll go and edit it inside and double click on that and I'll make it something along the lines of brown that's fine so double click on your movie clip to change its color that's if you want okay and now if I click on it with this tool, I can actually see the lines much better. Do you guys see the difference? Okay. What these lines do, all right, these are, these are the um, controls for rotation. This is an X, and it rotates it like so. This is a Y, and it rotates it like so. This is the Z, and it rotates it into D space, as we see it right now. And the outer line, you will be able to use all of them at once and rotate them. And it's a fake 3D. It's actually imitating 3D, but it looks pretty cool and real. So there you go. Right? And then if you play it, it will actually rotate your shape. So that's just the basic motion. I want you guys to click on the motion editor. And I don't know if you've seen that window before, but it's quite complicated looking. Yeah. It's got graphs in there, and it probably reminds you of your math class, and most likely you hated your math class, right? Mm -hmm. How many people hated your math class? A lot of people. Right. All right. If you like math class, great. I used to teach math, but um, I know that this basically scares some people, but don't be afraid. This is actually not as bad, and it's pretty easy to use, and I'll show you the controls, and we'll work with it step by step, and you'll actually get used to it. First of all, I want you to pay attention to these buttons over here. Uh, the little button here where um, the first one, it says graph size. Watch this, if I increase it, all of my little graphs increase. I can see better what's inside each graph. Okay? The problem is that when I see them all nice and um, they're all opened up, I have to scroll down to see the rest of them. And you know what? Sometimes that's not what I want to do. I don't like scrolling way too much. So I'm going to return that back to pretty small size. And instead of that I'm gonna select one of them let's say X and you can control the size of that one with this second controller so that whichever one you click that's the expanded graph size that's the one that's gonna be expanded that's the one you see like that okay and then if you click on it again it closes it up and it's you see all of them at once so do you guys see the difference between changing the size of all of them versus one that you click on? Right? So, and then the next one, the third one, is right here we see that we also have to scroll to see the entire span of the animation. And I don't like that, so I will increase the amount of frames I see, and now I don't have to scroll. I see frame 1 and frame 24 right there. So these controls make it easier for you to view, to understand what's going on, right? Very useful to know what they are. Otherwise, it's, you know, you kind of get lost in there. It's a lot of things. So let's see what's going on. We have a couple graphs here already, okay? If you open X, you see that on the X, it goes from um, quite a low number I don't really care exactly what number that is right now because I'm just explaining the basics of it. But it's somewhere right almost at 100. And then it goes up and it finishes a pretty high um, point there in 400s. All it is, it's showing that your object is moving from left to right on the X. Because you guys remember that uh, the Sage in Flash is set up in a way that, let me move this up a little bit, 
the stage in Flash is set up in a way that this is a zero, zero point, right? If I turn the rulers in, I go view rulers, right? See that zero, zero? So that right there is a zero, zero point. Now, if I go to the right on the X, it's going to be increasing on the X. See how it's 550 here? Now, from the Cartesian coordinates back in math class, you remember that Y decreases as it goes down. Here it's flipped, okay? So here it increases as it goes down, and you will see that this is not negative 400. This is positive 400. So basically, if you see the Y graph going up, that means it's going down on here. A little bit backwards, it takes a little bit of time to get used to. Uh, there's probably a good reason for that in computers. The screens are all set up that way. All right, in your, in your computer screen, this is a zero, zero of your actual screen. And as you go down, that increases. So that's, that's a good reason. It's a little bit conflicting with what you've seen. So just try to get used to that. But here is the reason. If you want to see the editor, by the way, motion editor, see how there's there's nothing in there you have to actually click on the object to see what you're working with to see the motion editor and then so that's why the X is going up that means it's going to the right okay if I decide to make sure we can see the object if I decide to take this point and move it up a little bit do you see how that affected my line there so that's what's happening <coughs> Okay, so you can actually manipulate the graph here, or you can simply type in the numbers here. Let's say I wanted to start at zero. It's going to start right on the edge here. Remember the registration point? At the start of the twin is right there, so that's how it's going to take it. And move from here to over here. If you want to move the entire twin, you can click on the line of the entire twin and that way you can move the twin. All right. All right, let's move on and look at a couple other things that we can do here. Uh, this was just the basic. Uh, you can also add key points or keyframes here on the timeline. Remember how we can move the timeline, uh, move the playhead on the timeline and pick up the shape and oops, pick up the shape and move it and it will alter the path well if you see that's reflected in here as well now and you don't even have to be on the timeline to do that you can choose either one you can go on the motion editor to add a little keyframe here there's two ways you can put the playhead let's say I want to add the keyframe right here put the playhead at the frame that you want and hit this little button add keyframe and that same way you can remove it so that's a keyframe that you can actually manipulate. And as you see, the stage shows that um, what's happening. And then you can actually remove that. Another way, instead of having to click here all the time, you can actually um, control click to add and control click to remove existing. So you can add very easily as many points as you need and then control them. So you can actually move these lines and see what happens and then preview your animation. That's an interesting thing to know, correct? Yes. So 